The fall of the Han dynasty and the devastation of life and death in the court and fields, the seventh prince Lu Jian was sold to the head of the Beast Mountain to serve the beast nurturing protector Wu Huan outside the Beast Mountain. However, due to his disobedience and offending words, he was constantly harassed. Ten years later, just as he was about to give up, he accidentally encountered the spirit beast Ao Do, who had crossed through and left the Beast Mountain, embarking on a new path of cultivation. Okay. Breaking through the fog, perhaps it is endless darkness. But. As long as you discover a glimmer of light, you cannot stop moving forward. This world shouldn't be like this, I shouldn't be like this, and the world shouldn't be like this either. The road ahead is vast, and thorns pave the way. I want to go against this fate. I want to change this world. Perseverance, cruelty, and determination are all indispensable. But can Lu Jian really let go of everything as he shows? With someone in mind, this long path of cultivation will not be lonely. You are mine, heaven and earth cannot compete. Can you hold me back from soaring? Ha! <laughs> can you hold me down? Chapter 1 Contract You are listening at NovelFull.audio Are you dead? I didn't say a word. A sharp male voice came in. Lu Jian opened his eyes at the sound. He was just beaten by three mortals, and now his face is covered in blood. Although he still looks young, his eyes are filled with stillness. The emaciated body tried to sit up. Upon seeing this, Chen Yen sneered. Ouch! Can't you get up now? Come on! You can do it. If you work hard again, you will soon succeed. Lu Jian tried several times in a row but couldn't achieve his wish. In the end, he could only lean against the withered and yellow ginkgo tree in the martial arts arena, looking at Chen Yen calmly. Ha ha ha! You also have today. Chen Yen laughed heartily, looking excited. Cough dot. Lu Jian coughed violently, splashing a little blood foam onto Chen Yan's face. After calming down a bit, he said intermittently, send me a message to Wu Huan, saying that she is an ugly woman, even uglier than a pig. Chen Yan sneered. TSK TSK. If it weren't for the protector buying you back then, you would be dead now, ungrateful guy. Lu Jian sneered contemptuously. Chen Yan wiped the saliva on his face with the handkerchief on his hand, leaned closer to Lu Jian's ear, and whispered, Yes, I also admit that she is a pig, but she can control our life and death. You look down on me, but I'm still alive, and what about you? Life is better than death. After finishing speaking, he returned and continued, Hey! Even if you treat her like this, she still thinks of you everywhere. Chen Yan said, taking out a package from her storage bag and throwing it next to Lu Jian. Tomorrow is the day for new disciples to receive spiritual beasts, right at your snake-nurturing peak. This is the method of controlling beasts, study it carefully, don't. Let down the protector's heart. Ha <laughs> ha. Chen Yan finished speaking and left. Lu Jian looked at the direction of Chen Yan's departure, with countless thoughts. He has always been at odds with Chen Yen, to be precise, as long as he is involved with the protector named Wu Huan, he will never be at odds. My injury was caused by Wu Huan's face. And this Chen Yen, who is known as Daolong among the many heads of noodles, has a certain level of cultivation and means. Lu Jian looked up at the sky again. Due to the southward location of the Beast Mountain Range and the Low Mountain Range, even in early winter, there is not a trace of snow white, but it is like deep autumn, with a golden hue all over the mountain. The setting sun shone on the martial arts arena in the outer gate animal breeding area, adding a touch of late autumn to the already golden world. In Lu Jian's sight, a ginkgo leaf drifted down in the wind and landed on his chest. Lu Jian regained his senses and picked up the package, swaying and standing up. Pick up the bamboo broom that was thrown aside by the group just now, drag your heavy body, and walk towards your own residence. Under the sunset, Lu Jian's hunched figure was stretched out, 
highlighting a sense of desolation. The next day Lu Jian followed the new disciple to collect the spirit beast. They are said to be new disciples, but most of them have been beginners for some time, and each person has some cultivation to some extent, otherwise they would not be able to control beasts. Lu Jian was bought back by Wu Huan, the guardian of the outer gate beast control area, ten years ago. He has been practicing for more than eight years now, but he has only reached the first level of qi refining after eight years. The inspector during the test said that he was a top dot level wood spirit root, but he was quite old, so his cultivation was relatively slow. This is also the reason why he was not taken seriously, so he was arranged to continue practicing under a protector. But even if one is too old, it won't take eight years to break through a layer, and the more one cultivates, the weaker their body becomes. Until recently, after breaking through a layer, they can't even defeat an ordinary ordinary person. Wu Huan and his face were suppressed, and his own lack of morale led to Lu Jian's mental state being repeatedly eroded, to the point where he now has no vitality or fighting spirit. Lu Jian certainly did not think that Wu Huan would kindly ask him to collect the spirit beast, and with his situation of almost reaching thirty but still being a layer of alchemists, the sect had almost given up. But he felt it didn't matter anymore, whether it was life or death, it didn't matter. Watching these energetic new disciples feel the joy of receiving their beloved spiritual beasts, Lu Jian suddenly becomes mesmerized. At this moment, he felt as if he was somewhat conflicted and asked himself in his heart. Is it? Or envy? Lu Jian, who originally thought he would have to queue for a long time, was unexpectedly called over by Chen Yen. Senior Brother Lu. Your spirit beast is here. Chen Yen called out gently, completely different from yesterday's face. His cultivation is much higher than that of Lu Ji, but he is a private product of the protector Wu Huan and not considered a disciple of the Beast Mountain. Therefore, according to the rules, he must be called senior brother by Lu Ji. Lu Chen knew that he wanted to set up a memorial archway. He didn't want to expose his mind, so he went straight to it. Chen Yen smiled kindly and handed over a beast control bag. Oh, this is a top dot notch spirit snake, you need to keep it well. Lu Jian ignored Chen Yen and took the beast control bag, looking at Wu Huan sitting not far away. That is a short and plump middle dot aged woman, with an extremely ugly appearance. Noticing Lu Jian's gaze, Wu Huan turned to him with a senior smile. She noticed that no one was paying attention to her and her smile gradually turned into a joke. Lu Jian looked at him with a dull gaze. Finally, Wu Huan smiled slightly, withdrew her gaze, and chatted with a beautiful woman next to her, looking very respectful. Upon seeing this, Lu Jian also withdrew his gaze. He doesn't like noise, so he took the beast bag and walked back. He is different from other disciples of the Beast Mountain and has no assigned residence. And usually there is a task of taking care of spiritual beasts, so I simply built a thatched cottage at the snake breeding peak, so I only need to go halfway down the mountain to get home. After arriving at his own thatched cottage, Lu Ji released the spirit snake from the beast control bag. Seeing the spirit snake, Lu Jian frowned. It's not because this spirit snake is too weak that Wu Huan is dissatisfied. Since he is willing to let him receive the spirit beast, he had already thought that this would be the result. The reason for frowning is because this spiritual snake is from the area where I am responsible for taking care of it, and it is quite impressive. The spirit snake has a green bamboo leaf appearance. Like Lu Jian, she is incredibly thin. At this point, being entangled by talismans was a means of unifying the disciples to avoid being resisted by spiritual snakes during the contract, rather than Lu Jian's special treatment. Originally, the spirit snake was still vigorously resisting, but when it saw Lu Jian, it was clearly stunned. The area where Lu Jian is responsible is the problematic spirit snake, which was sent over a month ago. On the day it was brought in, Lu Jian had already fed a spirit mouse, and now, not only has that spirit mouse not been eaten, but it has also gained a big circle of weight. Because walking to another snake cage is to feed the snake, 
when walking to this small green snake cage, Lu Jian will throw a handful of beans to the mouse. A skinny person and a skinny snake are quite a match, Lu Jian joked to himself. Speaking, he took out a talisman, a bronze bell, and seven glass lamps. The little green snake seemed to sense something, and its once calm emotions surged again, trying to break free from this constraint. He he, are you still unwilling? Lu Jian shook his head as he looked at the clever little green snake. You can't do it if you don't want to. After eight years of cultivation at Yu Beast Mountain, you must master a spirit beast to be successful. Otherwise, going through this cultivation will be considered a waste. Lu Jian was happy at the moment, no longer caring about the little green snake, and continued with the movements in his hand. Seven glass lamps set out in the shape of the Big Dipper, igniting it. Then, with the right hand and sword fingers, the talisman paper was sandwiched between the two fingers, and the hands kept changing. Suddenly, the talisman paper ignited. Upon seeing the situation, Lu Jian spat out a mouthful of blood from his tongue, which flowed through the self-igniting talisman and sprayed onto the sky above the seven-star lamp. The already dark sky suddenly seemed even darker, but the blood seemed like fuel, causing the lights of the seven-star lamp to suddenly increase. Lu Jian shook the bell. Upon hearing the sound of the bell, the little green snake's previously resistant body quieted down. Because it felt something being implicated in its divine soul, it originally wanted to resist, but when it thought of its own experience, it took the initiative to welcome it. Immediately after, Lu Jian muttered words in his mouth. Using blood as a guide and divine souls as a bond, blending with each other, living and dying together. A bond. The last word, qi, is particularly loud. When the last word, qi, fell, Lu Jian instantly stayed in place. First, a sense of weakness struck, causing his soul to ache and crack. Then, a forced infusion of memory made him faint. Chapter 2 Ao Do You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Memory is presented in a mixture of first person and third person perspectives. In my memory, it was first darkness, then slowly breaking through, with a forest in my eyes. A small green snake looked at everything in confusion, but the appearance of the green snake was clearly not the same species as the one I had contracted with, looking incredibly beautiful. Green Snake has been practicing near this mountain range for nearly a hundred years. Over the years, this green snake grew tired of the life here and began to leave. Slowly, humans gradually appeared in the eyes of the green snake. And the clothing of these humans is something that Lu Jian has never seen before, which can be called bizarre attire. The green snake arrived at a human village and changed its shape. It was as small as chopsticks and looked just like the contracted bamboo leaf green. It has been sitting on the roof of a household for over ten years. It is full of curiosity about the world, studying diligently no matter what, and has been here for more than twenty years, watching the children of this household grow from infancy to adulthood. One day, a TV drama called Journey to the West was broadcasted on TV. Ching Shi saw the Dragon Clan and knew that their surname was Ao. She also wanted to transform into a dragon, so she gave herself the surname Ao. But I don't know what it's called. After much contemplation, I have always felt that the pockets of human clothing are very convenient, and I have always wanted a pocket for storing things. So I named myself Ao Do, hoping that one day I could fulfill my dream. Finally, the little green snake that changed its name to Auto came back to the city of humanity. Although it had seen such high dot rise buildings on TV, it was also shocked when it was actually seen. Not long after hiding in the human park, when it slightly enlarged and preyed on birds, it was caught and did not resist. Afterwards, he was locked up in the zoo and hung on tree branches for people to watch during the day. At night, he climbed up to the roof and watched the TV from the distant security booth through the glass skylight. He spent the whole day eating and eating. This level lasted for another 10 or 20 years, and the people at the zoo discovered that something was wrong with this snake. 
For so many years, they had not seen this snake show any signs of aging, and such thick bamboo leaves were also unheard of. So I sent it to a place called the Snake Research Center to see what happened to this snake. After staying at the research institute for half a month, seeing that they had no intention of sending him back to the zoo, Ao Do fled without alerting anyone. The green snake escaped from the research institute and eventually hid in the deep mountains, waiting for decades more. My mind has also become calm from being playful in the past. One evening, while Ao Do was lying on the mountaintop looking at the city below, he was lost in thought when an old man riding a cow appeared beside him. It was strange to say that the old man looked very strong, but it did not make him feel scared. The old man smiled and said, You shouldn't be here. I'll take you back. The old man's voice is very kind, giving people a feeling of basking in spring breeze. Without giving the green snake any time to hesitate, the old man spoke and pointed at its head. Then the green snake knew nothing, except for two additional martial art secrets in his memory. A cultivation technique called Qingmu Changxing Ju, and a secret technique called Ichi Sanqing. The cultivation method is very strong, much stronger than the one Lu Jian practiced before. Moreover, this cultivation method has also spawned many secret techniques and techniques, which are simply unheard of. And it's much simpler to achieve one transformation and three clearances. The person who needs to cultivate has a powerful divine soul, and then uses innate qi to transform three real clones. In addition, there is a note saying, not suitable for you to cultivate, find a destined person for me. These two techniques also appeared in Lu Ji's mind at this moment. The screen turns again, and the green snake has now arrived at an unknown place. It recalled the two martial arts secret books given by the old man riding the ox, and the Qingmu Changxing Ju actually awakened some of its memory inheritance, making it suddenly enlightened and breaking through to an unprecedented level of cultivation. Lu Jian knew that according to the level of spiritual beasts, Auto had already reached four levels of cultivation, and according to the human realm, it was equivalent to building a foundation. Later on, it did not believe in evil and went to study the transformation of one qi into three clearing. However, for some reason, when it tried to cultivate, this transformation of three clearing caused heavy damage to its divine soul, and it became weak from then on. Not long after, it was caught by a man wearing animal skin clothes and thrown to the snake breeding peak, where a skinny man like himself took care of it. On the first day, I threw myself a mouse, but I didn't like to eat mice and preferred bird eggs. Now, I don't want to eat anything. At the time of Lu Jian's contract with the green snake, two women came from other snake breeding areas. One of the female disciples said attentively to the woman next to her. Uncle Lu, the strongest spirit snake in the snake nurturing peak is Qi Kuei, and his cultivation is comparable to yours, both of which have reached the foundation building period. If you don't like it, then it can only be Mo Jiao the woman named Lu Shishu has a beautiful appearance. Although she is called Shishu, she looks much younger and more beautiful than the woman next to her. She shook her head and said, of course, Qi Kuei is good, but if I force a contract, it will be unfair to my senior brothers. However, Mo Jiao always feels that he is a bit inferior. I want a spiritual snake with a low cultivation but potential that is not inferior to Qi Kuei. The female disciple heard this and said, Master, you don't need to come to this place either. This is the worst batch of snakes raised in the snake breeding peak, and most of them have problems. The woman named Uncle Lu shook her head. Suddenly, I saw a thatched cottage ahead and frowned. Who built the house in the animal husbandry area? Upon hearing this, the female disciple furrowed her brows and said disdainfully. It's Lu Jian, an external disciple. Due to his disobedience to the Wu protector, the relevant disciples did not arrange for him to have food, clothing, and accommodation. The woman surnamed Lu was originally going to scold her for not following the rules, but suddenly felt it and looked up at the sky. She felt a faint force of the heavenly way descending into the grass hut. Hurriedly walked over and pushed the door straight in. Uncle Lu, the female disciple, shouted. 
After all, Lu Jian is a male disciple, so it is somewhat irregular to break in directly like this. The woman surnamed Lu ignored and when she saw the situation in the room, her eyebrows furrowed and a faint anger emanated. Lu. The female disciple originally wanted to inquire about the reason, but when he saw the decorations on the floor of Lu Jian's room, he was also stunned. The woman surnamed Lu took a deep breath and turned her head to look at the female disciple, saying, He is a disciple of the Beast Mountain, but why is he using such shallow beast control techniques? If Lu Jian is still awake, he will think of the woman surnamed Lu, who was the woman Wu Huan talked to attentively when he received the spiritual snake today. Upon hearing this, the female disciple lowered her head and said, Senior uncle, I am not aware of it. I only know that he has offended Wu Hufa. The woman surnamed Lu sighed and then looked at the unconscious Lu skeleton on the ground, as well as the green snake shrinking into a ball on the side, before turning and leaving. The female disciple saw the woman surnamed Lu leave and quickly followed, but she dared not neglect. The woman surnamed Lu arrived at the place where the spirit snake was distributed at the Yusha Peak. Upon seeing this, Wu Huan quickly welcomed him. Senior Sister Yi, have you chosen what kind of spiritual snake you want? Originally, the name of this woman surnamed Lu is Yi Yi. Wu Huan looked like she could even be Lu Yi's grandmother, but she didn't expect to even respectfully call her senior sister. Lu Yi nodded and said, Just Chikue. Wu Huan nodded. Senior Sister Yi, you can just take it with you. When I come back, I'll just tell the elder. I don't think he'll mind either. Lu Yi shook her head. Where are the rules? Let's wait until the elder's seclusion is over before discussing them. Upon hearing this, Wu Huan agreed and said, I am truly a disciple of the head marshal uncle. When I do things, I always follow the rules and regulations, which makes me inexplicably convinced. Lu Yi turned her head to look at Wu Huan. Since Junior Sister talked about the rules, let's talk about the rules today. Wu Huan was taken aback. Senior Sister Lu Yi said slowly, I know Junior Sister likes to help some men from poor families or backgrounds, and it's understandable for them to pay for it. But for those who have already joined the sect, should Junior Sister restrain herself? Wu Huan's heart thumped for a moment, knowing what was going on, and she lowered her head and dared not speak. Lu Yi continued, before coming, I specifically checked this person's profile. You bought him back ten years ago, and eight years ago, he was judged to be a top. Level single attribute with spirit root and joined the sect. However, in these eight years, he has only honed one layer of qi. The reason behind this. Wu Huan swallowed her saliva. Senior sister, I. Lu Yi waved her hand. All right. This person is already a useless person, so I won't pursue him with you, but after all, we are from the same sect. Don't torture him anymore and expel him from the sect. Wu Huan dared not disobey and called out to Chen Yen, saying something in his ear. At first, Chen Yen was a bit dissatisfied, but when she heard it, she sneered. Chapter 3 Exiting the Sect you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. In Lu Jian's thatched cottage, shortly after Lu Yi left, the green snake underwent a transformation. Although it is still a green spirit snake, it is no longer like a green bamboo leaf. At this moment, it is emerald green all over, with long eyelashes and large eyes that look very slender. In the eye sockets, there are actually two yellow pupils, one in front and one behind, one up and one down one big and one small. Behind the chin, there are umbrella-shaped rows and rows, appearing dark green. Starting from the neck, there are two dark green feathers embedded in the body on both sides, occupying a quarter of the body. When opened, they resemble wings and can fly off the ground. There are white bone spurs protruding from the back, and as we approach the tail, the spines transform into armor, wrapping the tail one by one. The bone spurs at the tail end are the most unique, like a dagger, looking extremely sharp and the color is also the most unique, green and verdant. That emaciated body is now full. 
This is the appearance of Ao Do in Lu Jian's memory, and also the essence of Ao Do. Suddenly, a green light flowed around it, and it let out a hissing sound. Its two sharp fangs opened and shrank, and in no time, a woman appeared. Obviously, Ao Do has already taken shape. Ao Do sat up, looked at his body in confusion, and then stood up by the corner of the table. It was obvious that he didn't know how to walk, and almost fell a few times. She has a tall figure, one head taller than Lu Jian, and a head of soft dark green hair that extends all the way to her waist. Born with a petite melon seed face, with narrow eyebrows and large and slender phoenix eyes. The eyes have yellow double erect pupils, commonly known as double pupils, but the two pupils, one large and one small, are only connected together and do not overlap. Although these eyes are strange, if outsiders see them, they will definitely fall for them. There are long eyelashes on the upper and lower eyelids, a small and straight chiong nose, and a bright red mouth that is particularly sexy. The whole face gives people a strange and beautiful feeling, not to mention men, even women will admire it. Ao Do rubbed his head and then sat on the stool in the room. I won't touch this secret method again in the future, Ao Do muttered. She refers to the first sentence she said in her life, which is, one chi, three clears. From this, it can also be seen how much psychological impact the transformation of qi into three cleanliness has had on her. Her voice is melodious and pleasant, giving people a soothing feeling. The structure of Lu Jian's thatched cottage is very simple. It is said to be a thatched cottage, but except for the roof which is made of grass, the rest are woven and cast with bamboo strips, which are not too large, but can accommodate oneself. The layout inside is also relatively simple, with bamboo tables, benches, and beds, and a pot on a stove. There is a carving knife on the table, carving some wood carvings. Craftsmanship is not very good, it is Lu Jian's only hobby in addition to his usual cultivation. Ao Do sat on a stool next to the table and looked at Lu Jian, who was lying on his side with his back to him, still unconscious. His eyebrows furrowed slightly. She felt that the contract with Lu's bones was very domineering, with a feeling of advancing and retreating together, sharing life and death. The ability to repair heavily damaged divine souls on one's own, and the ability to transform while building foundations, is also related to this contract. Although there are all the benefits at present, this person's cultivation level is too low and gives the impression that there is not much room for growth, which will definitely drag him down in the future. Although advancing and retreating together with life and death, she could feel that if she really killed Lu Jian, although she would suffer heavy damage, she could recover after a long period of rest. Holding the carving knife that Lu Jian usually used for carving, he didn't immediately take action. Thinking back to the memories that Lu Jian had instilled in him, the knife lightly tapped on the table. She couldn't make up her mind for a moment. The rhythmic tapping echoed in the room, and Lu Jian woke up from his coma. He felt someone behind him and didn't turn back. This person gave him a sense of closeness, and he knew who he was, but at this moment he could feel a faint killing intent. He didn't hesitate about why the person who gave him a sense of closeness wanted to kill him, after all, he also felt the domineering connection of the beast control method he had just used, and killing himself was understandable. Wake up! Ao Do's beautiful voice rang out. Lu Jian still hasn't turned back. I've seen your life, it's very strange. Ao Do took a deep breath. She doesn't really want outsiders to know that she's not a creature in this world. I dare not keep you anymore. Lu Jian sighed and closed his eyes, unwilling to look back at the appearance of the person who had brought him a sense of closeness even before he died. Ao Do was not surprised why Lu Jian took life and death so lightly. She had already roughly recorded Lu Jian's lifelong memories. After thinking for a moment, he inserted the carving knife onto the table, then crouched down and flipped the Lu skeleton over. Lu Jian, who was originally calm, felt his inner tension as his delicate jade hands grabbed him. When Ao Do turned him over, his eyes instantly widened. Because Ao Do is not wearing clothes. 
he never saw this before. Just as his blood was expanding, he saw Ao Do slapping his abdomen. The excruciating pain, indescribable, spread from the Dantian to the meridians around the body, and then to the limbs and bones. Suddenly, I felt that my eight years of hard cultivation had been wasted in an instant. Ah, dot. Lu Jian shouted loudly, feeling so painful that he fainted. Ao Do looked outside and tied Lu Jian's beast control bag around his waist, then transformed back into a bamboo leaf green shape and crawled into the beast control bag. Chen Yen, who was ordered to expel Lu Jian, heard a scream as soon as he saw Lu Jian's thatched cottage in his eyes. Is the effect of this green snake so strong? Chen Yen frowned, feeling calm inside. He originally thought that Lu Ji would fail the contract, but he learned from Wu Huan that Lu Ji had succeeded. He didn't expect that this person and snake would reach a consensus. For Lu Jian, there was not much resentment towards him, but in this murky mud, he didn't want to see it, nor did he want to see it. No one stood firm in their innocence. Arriving at Lu Jian's room, Chen Yan's face showed indifference when he saw the seven star lights and bells placed in his room. Let out a sneer. Am I good at controlling beasts? Unfortunately, I had planned to communicate with you more in the future, but now I don't have the opportunity. Chen Yen said, walked over and took off Lu Jian's beast control bag, then pinched it and found that the green snake inside was still there. Opening the beast control bag, the snake fell to the ground. You don't have the right to occupy one of my beast control bags. I'll take you away. As he spoke, he planned to crush the green snake to death with his feet. But as soon as he lifted his foot, he saw the green snake crawl into Lu Jian's clothes. Chen Yen frowned, thinking of dealing with Lu's remains together later. Carrying Lu's remains, he left the thatched cottage and threw them onto his own flying boat. Yubeast Mountain covers a huge area, with a radius of thousands of miles belonging to the sect. Most of the sect's disciples never have a glimpse of the entire sect until their death. Chen Yan's cultivation level is very low. After more than ten years of cultivation, he still practices five levels of qi. This is still the reason why Wu Huan takes care of him, otherwise he might only have two or three levels. This also proves that his qualifications are very poor, to the extent that he is not even a disciple of the outer gate of the Beast Mountain, just a male favorite of Wu Huan. After passing the qualification test, Lu Jian became an outsider disciple even if he was over the age limit. This is also one of the reasons why their group of people are tired of Lu Jian. The cold wind woke Lu Jian up again. He opened his eyes and didn't ask where it was, nor did he have any doubts about where Qin Yan was taking him. Instead, he stared blankly ahead, with no trace of vitality in his eyes. I only ruined your cultivation, you should thank me. A beautiful sound rang in his ears, and Lu Jian looked through his clothes at Ao Do, who was sitting on his chest. This belongs to communication, you don't need to speak. Speaking of which, Ao Do paused for a moment. I have read your memory, you used to be a mentally determined person. Lu Jian still looked indifferent, ignoring Ao Do's advice not to speak, and directly asked, why do you say that? Upon hearing this, Chen Yen turned his head to look at Lu Jian sitting paralyzed on the other end of the flying boat. He doesn't have Ao Do's ability, he can detect Lu Jian waking up with his back to him. When did you wake up? Who were you talking to? Chen Yen asked in confusion. Lu Jian did not answer him. He he. Do you know what? Don't talk about Wu Huan like this, I still pity you. Chen Yen covered her mouth and smiled. Lu Jian remained silent, just calmly looking at Chen Yen. Chen Yen laughed heartily. The sound slowly disappeared from the flying boat. At this moment, Ao Do continued to deliver the message. Are you exposing me to want me to die with him and then you can escape? Lu Jian heard the words and said, I don't have this plan. If I were to choose between you and me to live, I would choose you. Upon hearing Lu Jian's words, Chen Yen turned her head and looked around Lu Jian, frowning and saying, 
are you losing your mind? Seeing Lu Jian ignoring herself, Chen Yan turned around again, only feeling a sense of vigilance in her heart. Ao Do's voice softened a bit. This place is still under the jurisdiction of Yubeast Mountain. At least once I have obtained this mountain range, I can kill him without restraint. Lu Jian remained silent. After a while, Ao Do continued, I said you have a firm mind because the techniques you practice belong to metal, and the five elements are mutually exclusive. Do you know that metal is mutually exclusive to wood, but you can cultivate the mutually exclusive techniques to a higher level? This is not just a simple summary of a firm mind. Lu Jian, who was originally indifferent, had a look of shock in his eyes and thought to himself, no wonder, no wonder the more I practice, the weaker I become. No wonder it took me eight years to cultivate one level. For your own good, I have abolished your cultivation, so you should say thank you, Ao Do said. After a long time, Lu Jian said, thank you. Chen Yan finally felt something was wrong and turned his head to glare angrily. Who are you talking to on earth? He he. With me. A beautiful voice sounded on the flying boat, making Chen Yan's hair stand on end. Chen Yan looked around, but the flying boat was only that big, and apart from him, only Lu Jian was left. While Chen Yan was anxious, he saw Lu Jian. Although he still had a calm expression, it gave Chen Yan the feeling of looking at a dead person. This made Chen Yan's heart skip a beat. Who exactly is it? The raised voice trembled slightly. Chapter 4 Spirit of Plants and Trees you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Suddenly, a chill filled her body, and Chen Yan had already felt something behind her. Maintaining a surprised expression on his face, he slowly turned his head and then lifted it up again. In an instant, he seemed to lose his thinking and his pupils contracted. Behind him, a phantom of a emerald green snake's head appeared, and the two yellow vertical double pupils directly disturbed his mind, making him stand so numb. After a moment. His dot. The big snake spat out its message. Chen Yan fell directly onto the spaceship. Ao Do's figure appeared out of thin air, wrapped in a ball of light, making her body blurry. Even with such a silhouette, Lu Jian was stunned. Coupled with that face, it was truly beautiful in the world. Have you seen enough? Ao Do's voice rang out calmly. Relying on the loose skeleton by the boat, he finally regained his senses and turned his head away from looking at Ao Do. Illusion Ao Do lowered his head and took a bag from Chin Yen. And soul searching. Lu Jian was surprised. He didn't expect that in just a moment, Ao Do would cast two secret spells on Chin Yen. The flying boat did not fall due to Chin Yan's fall, so it is believed that Ao Do has already controlled the flying boat. Looking at Ao Do again, she had already taken out a cloak from Chin Yan's storage bag and put it on. I only wore a cloak and didn't wear any other parts of my body. Ao Do is over 1.7 meters tall, and Chin Yan is half a head shorter than Ao Do. So this cloak can only wrap her upper body tightly, and her lower body is exposed from her thighs down. And Lu Jian is very short because he suffered from malnutrition when he was a child, only 1.6 meters. So in front of Ao Do, he looked like a child. After putting on his cloak, Ao Do rummaged through Chen Yan's storage bag and took out his commonly used items and clothes. He then sat down and calmly looked at Lu Jian. Lu Jian smiled and tried to look more natural. Perhaps feeling a bit awkward in the atmosphere, Lu Jian spoke up and said, I thought you demons didn't care about human judgment. I don't really care, but I'm afraid you'll die early if you watch too much, Ao Do's voice remained calm. He <laughs> he. Lu Jian smiled and tried to sit up. Is there any record in his memory of the beast control method I used for you? Ao Do nodded. This does not belong to the beast control method, it is a contract to accompany spirits, without any primary or secondary relationship. Although the secret technique is advanced, it is universal in the entire cultivator world and is not a secret. 
This kind of secret technique will allow the souls of both parties to merge, which is why memory exchange occurs. Lu Jian nodded. Ao Do didn't want to continue, but seeing Lu Jian's thoughtful expression, he continued, the two parties to the contract can complement each other and also constrain each other, with a mix of good and bad. These are all based on the cultivation of both parties. Take us for example, your soul has been tempered over the years and is very resilient. After soul fusion, my soul has been nourished by you, helping me recover while also transforming me. And you, although it may not seem like you have received any benefits, I have also provided some feedback to you after my soul has healed, so your mind is much clearer now than before. If you are a true cultivator, this benefit will be reflected, and it is not very useful for you now. And every time I practice, I also give you some feedback, of course, it's not useful for you as an ordinary person. Lu Jian spoke up and said, it seems like all of this is good. Why haven't the disciples of the Beast Mountain seen the contracted companion spirit? Ao Do smiled. The accompanying spirit of the contract is quite strict, and both parties' agreement is required first. In addition, Ubeast Mountain has a unique method of controlling beasts, and once a contract accompanies a spirit, it is no longer possible to control beasts. Lu Jian nodded and then froze for a moment. Didn't you disagree at that time? I didn't agree initially, but I feel like I'm about to die. Since I'm dead both vertically and horizontally, why not try what this contract means? Ao Do said. What if one party disagrees? Lu Jian continued to ask. Mild damage to the soul, severe damage to the body and death. To accompany a spirit in a contract, the first step is to find a stronger and more qualified partner than oneself, because this way there will be no situation of dragging oneself down, and a stronger partner will definitely not want to find a weaker one, so this is a paradox. Accompanying spiritual objects must jointly break through the great realm, which means that if I think of the golden elixir, you also need to have the conditions to break through the golden elixir. Ao Do sometimes speaks with words that are not from this world, but fortunately, Lu Jian can understand them based on memory or speculation. Is that why you wanted to kill me at the Beast Mountain? Lu Jian asked. Ao Do nodded. Lu Jian remained silent. In fact, while reaching a companion spirit with Ao Do, these questions had already been felt in his heart. At this point, Ao Do's words were nothing more than confirming his conjecture. After the flying boat left the Beast Mountain, it flew for a long time again. But Lu Jian didn't know what to say to Ao Do, so he decided to meditate and practice on the flying boat. After leaving the Beast Mountain, it was obvious that his spiritual energy had become much thinner, but for someone who had just started practicing, it had no significant impact. According to Ao Do's memory of the Qingmu longevity technique, Lu Jian tried to practice it. After two weeks of operation, he found that his cultivation speed was even slower than before because his spiritual roots were severely damaged. If it weren't for breaking through a layer before, the spiritual roots would probably have been sealed now. Keep running for the third week, suddenly. Lu Jian felt that the wood spiritual power he absorbed had actually nurtured a seed in the Dantian. Lu Jian dared not be careless and continued to operate Zhou Tian. The longevity technique for this seed green wood is recorded as the spirit of grass and wood, which is equivalent to a secret technique. The Qingmu Changsheng Ju records many secrets and techniques, all of which are comprehended during cultivation. Some will automatically comprehend when reaching the realm, while others rely on luck, such as the spirit of grass and trees. After this week's fortune turned, Lu Jian opened his eyes. He found that it was already morning, and after three weeks, it took more than a day. Suddenly, he noticed that Ao Do was frowning and looking at him. What's wrong? Lu Jian asked tentatively. Have you comprehended the spirit of grass and trees? Ao Do said. Lu Jian nodded. He didn't wonder why Ao Do knew, because the companion spirit could sense the other person's physical condition. Ao Do's gaze fixed. What's wrong? Lu Jian asked again. 
I won't kill you because you haven't had many years after becoming a mortal, and now you're starting to practice, Eo Do said in a dissatisfied tone. Lu Jian also frowned. Why didn't you stop me from the beginning? Who knew you could still practice like this? Ao Do complained. It's not really Ao Do's fault. It's difficult for ordinary people to step into the ranks of cultivators before they even practice for over 20 years, while Lu Jian is almost 30. Although he had a certain level of cultivation before, it was ultimately accumulated from metallic spiritual power, which was harmful to the body itself. In addition, personally abolishing Lu Jian's cultivation was even more damaging to his spiritual roots. Under such torture, it is theoretically impossible for the body to cultivate. Ao Do suddenly thought of something. I was careless. You have a wooden spirit root that can absorb metallic spiritual power, and you have also reached a level of cultivation. This life is a fantastic thing. It's not surprising that you can still cultivate now, considering this. Are you going to kill me? Lu Jian said lightly. He thought he could live according to his own way of life in the future, but he still couldn't control his fate. Ao Do thought for a moment. Although you can cultivate, it should be difficult for you to break through a layer with the current level of damage to your spiritual roots. Lu Jian was gloomy, and Ao Do once again confirmed his own ideas. After looking at Lu Jian, who was feeling down, Ao Do turned his head and said, There is a city ahead. Follow me to buy some things. The flying boat landed in a remote place, and then Ao Do put it in a storage bag. Will this person be killed or not? Ao Do asked as he looked at Lu Jian. Lu Jian looked at Chen Yen. He's also a pitiful person, forget it. Oh. Ao Do exclaimed, then casually swiped, a green light flashed past, and Chen Yan's head parted. You. Lu Jian was shocked. Ao Do smiled. Since I didn't kill you, then you should live well. As he spoke, a fireball flew out, burning Chen Yan's body in the discarded items that Ao Do had flipped out of the storage bag. I see from your memory that you are not a foolish person. Do you not know what kind of threat his life will pose to you? Ao Do's words are devoid of any emotional connotations. Chapter 5 Heading South you are listening at NovelFull.audio. It doesn't matter anymore, life or death itself is not something I can control, Lu Ji said silently. Ao Do turned his head and looked coldly at Lu Jian. I'm not asking you to live, as long as you say you want to die, I can help you. Lu Jian remained silent, calmly looking at Ao Do. After a moment, Ao Do's eyes slowed down. Do you know what the spirit of grass and trees is? Lu Jian still remained silent. Ao Do remained calm and continued, plants and trees, with endless wildfires, will never come to an end. Lu Jian was taken aback by the words, as if something had pierced through his soul. The spiritual seeds of plants and trees inside his body had sprouted. Feeling the change in Lu Jian, Ao Do frowned again. Go to the city. Ao Do turned into a small snake again, curled up on Lu Jian's chest. Lu Jian has read Ao Do's memory and she is not a person who loves to kill. In this situation, it should be the memories of myself and Chen Yen that have changed her. Ao Do did make some changes, but her changes were because the memories of Lu Jian and Chen Yen made her realize the world, and the changes she made were only actions, not mental changes. Lu Jian received the ingot of gold from Ao Do. After entering the city, he exchanged some silver coins at the pawn shop and then bought some clothes from the tailor's shop. When walking back, Lu Jian passed by a small street and stopped in his tracks. Baozi, hot and steaming. The Baozi shop owner shouted enthusiastically. What's wrong? Ao Do's voice rang out. Lu Jian smiled apologetically and did not answer Ao Do in the bustling street. Instead, he walked to the steamed bun shop. Boss, do you have any meat buns? Ao Do felt a hint of sadness when he saw Lu Jian's action. In my memory, 
Lu Jian had only eaten meat once since arriving at the Beast Mountain and was still a stolen spirit mouse. Later, he was discovered by a disciple in charge of auditing and forced to open a valley, almost starving to death. Some, some, my donkey meat buns are famous, but they are a bit more expensive, one penny per bun. The owner of the steamed bun shop noticed that Lu Jian was dressed in rags and specifically raised the price. Lu Jian hesitated a bit because the money was not his own and needed to be approved by Ao Do. Ao Do felt helpless. Lu Jian was taking care of so many spiritual beasts on the Beast Mountain, and his contributions were all deducted by Wu Huan. Not to mention the money, not even the rice, not to mention the spiritual stones. Therefore, he placed great importance on money and dared not misuse other people's money. Buy it. Received a reply from Ao Do, Lu Jian smiled and said to the boss, 20, eat on the way, help me pack it. Seeing Lu Jian pay, the owner of the steamed bun shop immediately became attentive, but because the owner didn't dare to pack too many at once, he only bought 10 donkey meat buns and 10 pork buns. Can you finish eating? Ao Do said as he watched Lu Jian eat three large meat buns in a row. Stay on the road and eat slowly. Lu Jian bolted back. There were few pedestrians on this section of the road, so Lu Jian spoke to Ao Do. After a moment of silence, Ao Do continued, Actually, I intended to keep you here. Upon hearing this, Lu Jian's movement from wolfing down became much slower and he stood still. You are now a mortal. Although this city is still under the jurisdiction of the Beast Mountain, it will not attract their attention. It would be best for you to live here. Ao Do seemed to be persuading Lu Jian. Lu Jian started to move, finished half of the buns in his hand, and put away the rest, continuing to walk outside the city. Outside the city, Ao Do transformed into a human figure, took off Chen Yan's cloak and burned it, then changed into a green dress. Taking out the flying boat from the storage bag, Ao Do saw the wind and jumped onto it. He looked at Lu Jian standing on the ground and said, I'm leaving. Lu Jian didn't speak, but took out the bun from his arms. Eating on the way. Ao Do took it and fell silent as he looked at the bun in his hand. Goodbye. Lu Jian turned his head and walked towards the city. Give people a feeling of thinness and loneliness. Wait. In the end, Ao Do couldn't hold back and called out to Lu Jian. Lu Jian turned his head. What's wrong? Do you want to go home? Ao Do asked. Lu Jian thought for a moment. If it's on the way, please. Ao Do nodded. Come up. Lu Jian boarded the flying boat and looked at the mountains and rivers blurred under his feet due to moving too fast. Is it far? Not far, the Baiyun Creek adjacent to the Beast Control Sect. Ao Do replied. Baiyun Creek. Lu Jian was puzzled. Ao Do replied, Baiyun Creek is also a sect that specializes in the five elements technique and specializes in attribute changes. It is located in the south and close to the Wuwei Sea. We are now in the state of Yan under the jurisdiction of Yushan, passing through the state of Xian, and then arriving at Qinxin, which was formerly known as the Great Han. The sect that destroyed the old dynasty was called Baiyun Jian, Lu Jianxi thought. Don't think about your Han dynasty. I was originally planning to go to the Hehuan sect in the southeast direction this time, but it has already been considered a change of course, Ao Do said. Hehuan sect. Is it the sect that studies flattery? Lu Jian was puzzled. You don't even know the lean zone of the Beast Mountain but you know the Hehuan sect hundreds of thousands of miles away. Ao Do joked. Wu Huan often mentions that sect, Lu Jian explained. By the way, why did you go to that sect? Yes, you look so beautiful, where is more suitable for you? Lu Jian asked and answered questions on his own. Ao Do smiled. He he. I didn't go because I was beautiful, but because my own tribe is good at seduction, and illusions are still derived because seduction is too powerful. Lu Jian looked at Ao Do. 
Although she didn't do anything, just that smile gave him a feeling of wanting to be close, not just because of the companion spirit. After nodding in agreement, he shifted his gaze. This seductive technique evolved from our clan's use to attract powerful opposite sex. It's not difficult to use it, but it's difficult to cover it up, so you have to endure it yourself. My current strength cannot be completely restrained, Ao Do joked. Upon hearing this, Lu Jian's face turned slightly red, so he decided to meditate cross-legged and start practicing. Three days later, Yu Beast Mountain. Wu Huan paced back and forth in her cave, looking very anxious because her big lang had been missing for four days. Did he leave me? Thinking of this, Wu Huan sat down dejectedly. At this moment, the door was knocked. Come in. Wu Huan's voice was hoarse. My queen, you are all haggard. Wu Huan looked at the person. Erlang, are you saying that Daoang doesn't want us anymore? I gave him a flying boat as a gift. It's only a half day's journey here, why hasn't he come back for so long? The beautiful man named Erlang heard this and said with pain, this heartless one, it's thanks to the queen being so kind to him, and acting in such a way. Wu Huan remained silent. Erlang continued, I see, Chen Yen is just like Lu Jian, a white-eyed wolf who can't be fed enough. Wu Huan's face turned cold. Get lost. Erlang's body stiffened and he immediately possessed himself, holding Wu Huan's feet in both hands. Your Majesty, Wu Chang asked me to deliver a message. Upon hearing this, Wu Huan hurriedly said, Has he seen Dalang? Erlang shook his head. He said that he searched along the direction where Qin Yen left for two days and did not find any trace of him. He suspected that a master had taken action to kill or kidnapped him. Upon hearing these words, Wu Huan's heart turned to ashes. On the day Qin Yen left, she sent Wu Chang to search for him. Wu Chang, who had eight levels of qi and also had flying magic tools, could be considered a top figure in the outside world. If Qin Yen really ran away, even if he tried his best, Wu Chang could still catch him on the same day. But if there is no trace after two days of pursuit, then it can only be the result that Wu Chang said. Chapter 6 Lu Ji's Background You are listening at NovelFull.audio Heading south all the way, half a month later. Passing through the border of Xianghua, there was a battle between Chen Xian and Xianghua, but the scale was not large. Ao Do explained to Lu Jian why the battle started. The largest sect in the cultivator world before, the Qianqi sect, established a rule at its peak. All sects are not allowed to have direct conflicts. If there is an unequal distribution of benefits, the dynasty under their protection can engage in combat. The number of dispatched cultivators cannot exceed two gold pills, and the number of gold pills cannot exceed ten. The number of people building the foundation cannot exceed ten, and the number of people practicing qi cannot exceed one hundred. The winner can enjoy the resources alone, while the loser can take them themselves. The Qianqi sect has now been overthrown by the Seven Sect Alliance, but this rule has not been changed, but it has changed its flavor. At first, the purpose of Emperor Qianqi's establishment of this regulation was to encourage various major sects to support the dynasty and strengthen it, so as to have a continuous stream of cultivator seedlings. There have been constant wars between dynasties, and with the intervention of monks, it may seem like they promoted the war, but in fact, with Qian Qi in charge, the war has decreased, as it controls most of the resources. Now, there is a relative balance between the various sects, which creates a situation where no one is convinced. Yubist Mountain and Tianyan sect are fine, because their sect's combat power is strong, there are not many sects with no long eyes to touch the mold, and they are basically small dot scale battles. But other sects dynasties have been plagued by constant wars, and the residents in border areas are already 9 out of 10, constantly mobilizing troops from within the country. The mining areas between the sects require ordinary people to mine, and a large amount of manpower is needed here. Therefore, many countries' populations have sharply decreased in the past decade. 
If this continues, the dynasty of this country may not be far from collapse. At the end, Ao Do even sighed. Lu Jian was deeply touched because he was sold to Wu Huan after the downfall of Qian Qi. The two did not stop at the border, but went to the capital city of Qinqin. After ten days of leisurely sailing, the two finally arrived at the capital city of Qinxin, Xinyang City. The name of Xinyang City has not changed, and ten years ago, it was also called Xinyang City during the Han Dynasty. The two landed in a remote area and then entered through the city gate. After entering the city, Lu Jian looked at this city. Although he had grown up in this city, he had never seen this city before. His only impression of home was the black room and an old woman named Chunhua. Ao Do had a veil on his face, but just those eyes made countless people stand still. There is a golden core cultivator sitting in the palace, I cannot take you there. Ao Do looked at Lu Jian, who was full of thoughts, and said. Lu Jian nodded. That's enough here. Ao Do nodded. Let's go have a meal together. Over the past twenty days, Ao Do walked in a straight line in a hurry and did not pass towards the direction of the town. Lu Jian's steamed buns had already been eaten, and in the end, Ao Do personally hunted them, which prevented Lu Jian from starving to death. Ao Do was originally quite interested in cooking, and Lu Jian thought she could make some rich dishes based on the memories of that world. However, Lu Jian was particularly disappointed. Along the way, the meat she ate was either undercooked or burnt. In the end, Ao Do lost his interest, and the position of chef was ultimately left to Lu Jian to cook. The two of them sat by the window on the second floor of a restaurant, both starving. Ao Do ordered a table of dishes. It is worth mentioning that the high cultivators Lu Ji met before did not eat much, but when he arrived at Ao Do, he ate more than Lu Ji, a starving ghost. With Ao Do's arrival, all the guests present had no intention of eating. Both men and women watched Ao Do intentionally or unintentionally. Lu Jian was not very comfortable, but Ao Do looked very casual. He knew that this was Ao Do's instinctive talent, which he couldn't hold back now. After dinner, Ao Do asked for a room and slept until night. And Lu Jian rested on the table. Moonlight fell through the window and Ao Do looked at the slightly fleshy man through the moonlight, recalling his past. Nearly thirty years ago, the great Han dynasty under the Qianqi immortal sect. At that time, the Han dynasty was at its peak, and Emperor Lu Chui was brave and strategic, leading the southern barbarians to lead the surrounding countries with heavy armor. He did not allow Qian Qi Qi to use a cultivator. At that time, even the Golden Core cultivator stationed in the country had to show great respect to Lu Chui. The selected harem beauties are completely disdainful of ordinary humans. There are countless cultivators and demon tribes, among which the fox tribe women with half-demon bodies are the most touching to Lu Chui's heartstrings, and Lu Ji's mother is a fox tribe woman. In theory, Lu Ji's mother is deeply loved by Lu Chui. Lu Ji's life should be smooth sailing, but often things don't go according to people's wishes. As soon as Lu Jian was born, his mother was framed and thrown into a well. Lu Chui ignored this matter and was even seduced by the harem to send the newborn Lu Jian to Zongjin Temple. However, Lu Chui still lived a carefree and happy life all day long. These memories are not vivid in Lu Jian's mind. When the scene appeared, it was a palace maid named Chunhua feeding a baby rice paste in the pitch black room, without even breastfeeding. After Lu Jian grew a little older and was about five years old, the palace maids moved out and came to observe Lu Jian's daily life at designated times. Even larger, the palace maids only carried the clothing and food of Lu Jian, and did not set foot in the place where Lu Jian was imprisoned. Someone must have intervened in this, otherwise at least when Lu Jian was resting, he could have seen the palace maid. But since then, Lu Jian has not been able to take a shower. In the confined space, there was only Lu Jian left. At first, there was still crying, but after a little longer, it became much quieter, living in his own thoughts all day. 
In the picture, Lu Jian stared blankly at the window near the roof. Slowly, sunlight shone down on the young Lu Jian's face. He showed a brilliant smile, blowing the dust in the light and letting it scatter. If it rains, he won't be angry either. He just stared blankly at the window, hoping for raindrops to splash in from outside the room. From here, it can be seen how much Lu Jian yearned for freedom at that time. But he can't thunder, he's afraid of thunder, and that angry voice can always shatter his strength, making him curl up in a corner. Even if the splashing raindrops formed a puddle of water, he couldn't get excited and would only curl up there trembling, calling out the name of the palace made Chunhua in his mouth. The palace made Chunhua, who brought him food, would talk to Lu Jian every time she came and tell him about the outside world. Lu Jian is very eager to ask this palace maid for a long time. Chunhua, can I go out? At this time, palace maids always remain silent. At that time, Lu Jian was unaware that his fate could not be changed by a palace maid. Over time, Lu Jian also grew tired and knew that he might only be able to stay in this secluded space for his whole life. His temper became irritable and suspicious, and he would vent his anger on the palace maid Chunhua for a long time. You said you were a servant, so I ordered you to let me go. Why didn't you listen? Damn servant, why are you only here today? Spring Festival Does Spring Festival ignore me? Don't you have to worry about me when you're busy? Chun Hua, if I go out, I will treat you well, like. Like the mother you said, yes. I will treat you like my mother in the future. Why not? I said if you can be my mother, you can be my mother. Are you saying you don't want me anymore? A few days ago, why didn't you bring me food? I won't make trouble anymore. Can you please don't leave me? Chun Hua. I can't get out, right? You go. Let me die here. From then on, Lu Jian became quiet and ate meals one after another. Chun Hua was very anxious, and Lu Jian could be said to have been pulled up by her. Looking at Lu Jian, who had lost his vitality, he would rather Lu Jian scolded him than him. Your Highness, a new group of palace maids have arrived today, and they told me. There's no palace outside that's comfortable. But I still want to go outside and take a look back to my hometown in Xiaoha village, of course. I will definitely take you with me, have my own small courtyard, and watch you get married and have children. It was not until this moment that Lu Jian realized who was not the sparrow in the cage. Your Highness, you haven't spoken for several days, haven't eaten anything for several days, is it because the food doesn't taste good? Your Highness, a eunuch is leaving the palace today. I asked him to go outside to find a fortune teller and calculate a divination for you. The fortune teller said, your name is not good, it's very unlucky. You see. At the age of fifteen, which is the year when you tied your hair. Whom fortune tellers seem to call it that. In the year when you tied your hair, how about I ask the teacher or the fortune teller to give you a sign. They say your sign is a change of destiny, the earlier the better, so don't wait until you pass the imperial examination. Lu Jian's name, Lu Chui, has not been questioned. It was initiated by Zongjing Temple, and there must have been interference from the harem. Today you are fifteen years old, so I can't help you tie your hair. However, I have assigned someone to give you a name, Changqing. Lu Changqing. What do you think? Thank you. Lu Jian, who had not spoken for a long time, finally returned to Chunhua. Chunhua wept with joy. She really wanted to see this child. He wanted to know how tall he was now, so picky about food, and whether he was very thin. In Lu Jian's memory, at first Chunhua was still a woman's voice. Gradually, this voice also grew older and the hands that handed food from the dog hole also changed from slender soft pants to wrinkled and curved. Memory switches between first-person and third-person perspectives, in that secluded room, from childhood to adolescence. Lu Jian was imprisoned in Zongjing Temple for sixteen years. He thought he would be locked up for a lifetime, 
but he never expected to see the light of day again. The Qianqi immortal sect was destroyed, and Lu Chui was used to living a high life and was unwilling to compromise. He offended the cultivators in Bai Yunjian and was overthrown and rebuilt by Bai Yunjian, renaming him Chen Exian. He had the intention of going to Chen Exian. If possible, actually Lu Jian really doesn't want that day to appear. It was an evening, and Lu Jian raised his hands and head slightly, enjoying the sunset shining through the window slightly below the roof, but the door was suddenly pushed open. Lu Jian turned around and saw an old woman running in anxiously. Seven or eight years have passed, and Lu Jian has no impression of this aging appearance, but he knows that this is Chen Hua, the person closest to him. Chen Hua stared blankly at Lu Jian, tears streaming uncontrollably down her face. A scream came from outside the house, and before Chen Hua could say a word, she saw a group of soldiers in armor walking in. Seeing the visitor, Chen Hua shouted loudly, Don't kill him, don't kill him. As she spoke, she protected Lu Jian behind her. The young man didn't know who those soldiers were or what they were doing. He didn't even go to see them. Instead, he lowered his head and looked at the hunched old woman who was one head shorter than him. He smiled slightly and called out softly, Mother. The old woman trembled all over, her face still wet with tears. At this moment, tears streamed down her face. She wiped her tears and softly responded. Hey! In response, Chen Hua extended her trembling hands to touch the face of the child who had been raised for over sixteen years and was now one head taller than herself. But in the next moment, the soldier's knife pierced through Chen Hua's chest, and the tip of the knife sprouted a crimson hue. Chen Hua's hands remained raised, but trembling even more. She lowered her head to look at the knife on her chest and then at Lu Jian, wanting to say something. However, her mouth opened and her throat, which was already filled with blood, made a gurgling sound, followed by a slight splash on Lu Jian's face. Lu Jian looked at everything in shock, panicked for a moment, and looked at Chen Hua who was about to fall. He quickly reached out and grabbed the hands that wanted to touch his cheeks, then knelt down with inertia. Mother! Mother! Lu Jian shouted, but Chen Hua's throat could only make a gurgling sound. Chen Hua. Lu Jian pressed Chen Hua's hands on his face, tears streaming uncontrollably. Long green. Finally, Chen Hua called out Lu Jian's calligraphy, but she also took her last breath. Mother. Lu Jian howled up to the sky, and due to his vigorous shouting, his fair face, which had been out of sight for a long time, was now flushed with shock, with bloodshot eyes. The soldier seemed tired of watching and was about to kill the assassin when a man in a blue shirt came in. Wait a minute, the man in green called out. The soldier heard this and quickly turned around to salute. Immortal master. I'll keep this person for use, you guys go somewhere else, the man in green continued. Later, Lu Jian was knocked unconscious by the man and sent to Wu Huan in a neighboring country. At that time, Qian Qi had just been destroyed, and the empire under his control was divided up. Wu Huan happened to participate in the surrender of Xianguo, so the two were not too far apart. The two met while participating in the extermination of the remaining sins of the Qianqi sect. The man in blue knew about Wu Huanhao and was obsessed with him, so he thought of selling Lu's remains to Wu Huan and exchanged two inferior spirit stones. However, Lu Jian had always been locked up, so his mind was not very mature. He ignored the temptation offered by Wu Huan and cursed her as an ugly woman. Wu Huan was furious, but seeing Lu Jian being so good and killing him felt regretful, he kept making things difficult for him, hoping that he would submit to him. Chang. Qing. Ao Do called out softly. Lu Jian, who was sleeping, opened his eyes and their eyes instantly turned red. Only one person has called out this character, which is Chen Hua. Now that it has been called out by Ao Do, Lu Jian's mind is filled with thoughts for a moment. I didn't immediately look up, but steadied my mind. When he steadily looked up at Ao Do, he was already standing by the window looking at the moon in the sky. 
she is particularly beautiful and moving under the moonlight. I should go now. Ao Do said. Lu Jian remained silent for a while and nodded. Mmm. Where are you going without asking me? Ao Do was surprised. Isn't it the Hahuan sect? Lu Jian said, Ao Do smiled faintly. Perhaps. Lu Jian also smiled along. You can go anywhere, the sky is high and wide, and you are free. I'm just asking, because if nothing unexpected happens, I won't be able to leave Xinyang City in my lifetime. Hearing Lu Jian's sadness, Ao Do shook his head and took out seven glass lamps from his storage bag. This lamp was used when we contracted to accompany the spirit. If you take it to the pawn shop, it should be worth some money. Ao Do said and took out all the money on his body and placed it on the table. Adding these should be enough for you to use for a lifetime. Lu Jian's heart warmed as he looked at these things. Don't you keep some? Ao Do shook his head. I am a foundation building cultivator, a fourth level demon beast, and my gold and silver treasures are no longer useful to me. I use spirit stones. Lu Jian nodded. Thank you. Ao Do smiled and looked at Lu Jian. Lu Jian also looked at Ao Do. He was used to those double pupils and was not disturbed by the charm that Ao Do unconsciously emitted. He simply felt good looking. MMM it looks really nice. For a long time, Ao Do broke this silence. I'm leaving. MMM. Lu Jian nodded. The room seemed a bit empty, and Lu Jian, who had been sleeping all day, was no longer drowsy. Looking at the direction in which Ao Do disappeared, he suddenly fell into confusion. He didn't go to light the light, perhaps feeling that the stool was a bit high. Lu Jian got up and collapsed on the bed, leaning his head against the edge of the bed to look at the roof and let out a long sigh. He kept it like this, raising his right hand above his head and letting the moonlight shine on his palm, slowly rotating. In the dark night, Ao Do hung in the air, looking at everything inside the house. After a moment, she withdrew her gaze with a pitiful expression on her face. She looked southeast and then turned back to look at Lu Jian. Poor person. He said and headed south. Bai Yun Creek is one of the seven major sects, located in the south. The sect covers an area of only about one dot third of Mount Yushan, but each peak peaks directly into the white clouds. It is said that the highest main peak can overlook the world, and is known as the most beautiful mountain and water, as well as the pinnacle of martial arts in the world. The purpose of this sect is to uphold justice and eliminate injustice in the world, but among cultivators, they all refer to Bai Yun Jian as a hypocrite. In the early morning of this day, a woman arrived at Bai Yun Creek. The beauty of her appearance made the hearts of the sect yearn for her, and everyone smelled her to catch a glimpse of her beauty. In the end, even the figures at the level of the leader of this sect were alarmed, and they were taken as disciples of the seventh peak leader. Many disciples of the sect sighed with regret, because the seven peaks master was notorious for being lascivious. When this woman worshipped under his sect, the outcome was already certain, and in the future, she might have to call out to his grandmother. It is worth mentioning that no one knows what cultivation this woman is. Even the Seven Peaks Lord, who took her as his disciple, did not see it and only cared about her beauty. If Lu Jian found out, he would definitely say a few words of praise, because Ao Do's enchanting talent can even be effective as a golden core cultivator, which is a great realm. Chapter 7 Anjia Zhenyang City. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. It started to rain lightly in Zhenyang City today. At dawn, Lu Jian left the inn and bought a few meat buns to fill his stomach at the steamed bun shop next to the inn before heading towards the outer city. He needs to find a place to live now, and the houses in the inner city are definitely unaffordable. Ao Do left him with little money and the silver banknotes were printed by the countries of Yubist Mountain, which cannot be used here. Therefore, before going to the outer city, he still needs to find a pawn shop to exchange silver banknotes. Carrying a large package on his back, 
it was very inconvenient, but fortunately, he didn't walk long when he saw a pawn shop. The price difference of the silver bill is very serious, it's almost halved. Fortunately, the price of gold is reasonable. Gold can be considered a hard currency, but among ordinary people, gold is difficult to circulate, and even silver is rare, mostly copper coins. However, there is still a considerable amount of silver exchange between middle-class people. Including his own wealth, Lu Jian exchanged a total of 2,300 taels of silver coins, which was not much, but enough for a middle-class citizen to use for a lifetime. Arriving in the outer city and turning to the afternoon, I finally found a desired courtyard. The courtyard faces south and north, and the interior is quite large. Apart from two bedrooms and a main hall, there is also a large open space. Turn your back to the bedroom, with the stove on your left and the animal shed on your right. This shed is not big enough to keep some chickens and ducks. On the right side of the courtyard, there happens to be a river, which originates from the mountain south of the city and flows eastward when it reaches the city. Therefore, the position of Lu Jian is still upstream. Due to its proximity to the outside of the city, there are not many residents here, but the scenery is really pleasant. Not far from the back of the courtyard, there is a ten-mile peach forest. It is believed that the coming spring will attract many literati and scholars. Although it is located in a remote area, it is really not cheap. Lu Jian spent twelve hundred taels to buy it. As soon as Lu Jian approached the courtyard, he smelled a fragrance and opened the door to find a osmanthus tree in the center of the courtyard. At this time, the osmanthus flowers were about to wither but not yet wither. Lu Jian really likes this rural courtyard, which was often cleaned before, so he only needs to prepare some daily necessities to move in directly. This house has been mortgaged out, so the seller of the house is not the original resident, but a businessman. The businessman who sold the house to Lu Jian looked at the tattered and courteous customer and said, If you want to prepare some furniture, you can directly list it and I will have someone else purchase it for you. Lu Jian nodded and made a list of commonly used utensils for the merchant, and then asked him to buy some chickens and ducks. After finding a place to live, Lu Jian went to the tailor's shop to make some clothes. He didn't have any luxurious clothes, but only made some linen and plain clothes. After staying for a few days, Lu Jian brought in some workers and transformed the open space next to the stove into an iron-making room. The iron stove was carefully designed by Lu Jian and could also be used to make porcelain. There is also a dyeing tank built next to the iron-making room. The main hall in the middle of the two bedrooms, Lu Jian, was converted into a sewing room. The textile machine and spinning wheel were also carefully modified by Lu Jian, and two water wheels, one large and one small, were also built in the river as power sources for the textile machine and spinning wheel. In the future, we can weave clothes and sell shoes, and make a living by selling iron and steel. Although he doesn't know much, can he learn? Ao Do's memory is very rich. In addition, Lu Jian also bought a lot of carving tools, jade and wood, which he had prepared. There was really no place to put them, but Lu Jian kept them in the master bedroom. After spending all of it, I spent more than 300 taels. Now that I only have 800 taels of my belongings, I dare not use them recklessly. Even if I purchase goods recklessly, it will become a problem. With a place to live and means to make a living, meat can be seen for three meals a day, and there is a river next to it. You can also fish and eat when you have free time, which is why Lu Jian is willing to buy this courtyard. Lu Jian's life has become more fulfilling. Apart from three meals a day, he sometimes works in a blacksmith's workshop, or in a kiln. Sometimes I fall for carving. Sometimes the weaving process is repeated. At night, he practiced cross-legged and never gave up, even though Ao Do said he could never become a cultivator after practicing for a lifetime. He doesn't know why, despite his fearlessness towards life and death in the past, he is now so persistent in his cultivation. He thought of the spirit of plants and seemed to understand something. Yeah. There's no reason for plants to wait for death. Lu Jian smiled. 
Time flies, four months have passed. On this day, Lu Jian took out a set of clothes that he had been studying hard for the past four months. A pair of shorts that appear light blue, with thin and wide legs, resembling a skirt. The irregular cutting makes the thread loose, and there are several striped loopholes. Although it looks rough, the inside is sewn with silk, making it very smooth to wear and not feeling worn. In Ao Do's memory, this is called jeans. Then there is a long-sleeved black leather jacket with a navel exposed, and the back of the garment is inlaid with metal cobras. Although it is metal, it is painted with colors, giving it a highly mechanical beauty. The underwear is a pink corset. Then there is a pair of black leather short Martin boots. This is the most profound outfit in Ao Do's memory. When he saw a celebrity wearing it in that world, he thought it would be great if he had such an outfit. Finally, there is a brown hat. In Ao Do's memory, it is called a baseball cap, but the trademark he designed is not as in Ao Do's memory, but also embedded with a blue metal snake with a big mouth and exposed venomous teeth, consistent with Ao Do's body. Overall, it is roughly consistent with Ao Do's memory, but Lu Jian's modifications have made it more aesthetically pleasing and comfortable. Lu Jian himself didn't know why he was doing it, so he tailored it for Ao Do. Not only did he make this set of clothes, but there were also several strange pieces of clothing in the sewing room at this time. What hoodies and workwear, what hiking shoes, all of them. When it comes to clothing, Lu Jian's iron stove has never been turned on much before. He only uses zipper metal on clothes to make iron. Looking at the clothes in front of him, Lu Jian smiled. Unfortunately, we can only do it for fun. Who dares to wear these clothes except for her? The thoughts in this world are not so free. How dare you wear such revealing clothes? Putting away his clothes, Lu Jian immersed himself in the handicrafts again. Two days later, New Year's Eve. Today, Lu Jian did not go to forge iron, nor did he go to sew or carve. Instead, he cleaned the house inside and outside, pasted couplets on the door frame, and hung a portrait of the last immortal in Baiyun Creek on the door. Lanterns were also hung at the door. I was busy until the afternoon when I plunged into the stove again and prepared a large table of dishes. At night, the fireworks of Xinyang City covered the sky, and the city was filled with joy and laughter. Lu Jian sat under the Osmanthus genus, holding chopsticks in one hand and a bowl in the other, while his head looked at the fireworks in the sky. Suddenly, he didn't know why he was doing so much today. To reflect one's loneliness. Perhaps I shouldn't celebrate the first spring festival myself, and should just live it as usual, as a normal day, so that I may be happier. The dishes on the table have lost their flavor. The brightly lit courtyard has lost its color. At this moment, Lu Jian thought of wine. Another day, I'll brew some, but it won't work. I can also make some cigarettes. Speaking, he picked up a piece of meat and put it in his mouth, slowly chewing it. So abundant. A voice shattered the loneliness amidst the noise, and Lu Jian seemed to have forgotten to chew the food in his mouth. Let out a probing shout. Ao. Do. Chapter 8. Spring Festival. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Ao Do appeared across from the stone table out of thin air. Dressed in a blue and white dress, swaying with the gentle breeze, and with a simple touch of dark green hair, it gives off a feeling of ice and jade, as if not eating human fireworks. Lu Jian looked at it with a daze. I've gained weight. Ao Do smiled at the corner of his mouth. Upon hearing this, Lu Jian was taken aback and then smiled awkwardly. After several months of recuperation, Lu Jian's body is no longer thin, and with the forging of iron on his body, he gives a feeling of strength. But when it comes to being overweight, it doesn't matter. It looks very coordinated. Ao Do's statement was just a joke. Sit down quickly. Lu Jian hurriedly said. As he spoke, he ran towards the stove and took out a pair of bowls and chopsticks. Ao Do nodded and sat down, surveying the courtyard. 
Are you still used to it? It's okay. Lu Jian placed the bowls and chopsticks in front of Ao Do. Ao Do picked up a piece of fish meat, his eyebrows slightly furrowed, and his face began to smile. Are you so skilled? Lu Jian smiled and said, I used to just make do with it, but recently I've made some seasonings based on your memory and the taste has improved. Ao Do's temperament seems to be pretty good today, with a smile on his face all the time. Then I won't be polite. Even for eating, Ao Do gave Lu Jian a pleasing feeling. She doesn't chew slowly like a jade from a small family, nor does she wolf down like a starving person, eating without haste or delay. It was Lu Jian who was too busy watching Ao Do come and didn't move his chopsticks much. After dinner, Lu Jian brewed a pot of tea and the two sat at the stone table watching the fireworks. To be precise, it was Ao Do watching the fireworks, while Lu Jian was watching Ao Do. Are you not hiding it now? It seemed that he noticed Lu Jian's gaze, and Ao Do said without looking back. I won't hide it. That would be hypocritical. Lu Jian said lightly. Ao Do smiled slightly. Is the money enough to spend? Enough. Lu Ji thought to himself, wait for me a moment. As he spoke, he ran into the room. For a moment, Lu Jian came out holding the folded clothes and placed them on the stone table. Ao Do was puzzled. Lu Jian pulled away his clothes. Ao Do's pupils dilated and then instantly shrank. What did you do? Ao Do exclaimed in surprise. Lu Jian nodded. I make a living by doing it. There are still a few hoodies and workwear in the house. If you come, I won't sell them. I'll give them to you. Ao Do snatched it over and disappeared directly in place. The door of Lu Jian's bedroom slammed shut. Lu Jian stood still, shook his head and smiled, then took out his shoes and placed them on the stone table. As expected, Ao Do kept looking back and forth at the shoes on his feet after opening the door. These shoes don't match this clothes. Ao Do looked at the shoes and complained. Here. Lu Jian gestured to Ao Do to look here. Ao Do looked up and saw the black leather short Martin boots on the stone table, which made him happy. Putting on his shoes, Ao Do tied his hair into a wolf tail and put on a baseball cap. His whole body went from being pure and pure just now to being heroic and spirited. The rare expression of the little daughter made Lu Jian feel that Ao Do was getting closer, and her gaze was no longer so blurred, but more gentle. Ao Do turned around and asked Lu Jian, Are you pretty? This garment is considered to have caught your light, Lu Jian said. Upon hearing this, Ao Do looked at Lu Jian with a teasing expression. There is a scumbag's potential. Thank you for making the clothes for me. You're welcome it was originally made for sale. Lu Jian waved his hand and smiled sarcastically. Made for sale. Ao Do looked at Lu Jian jokingly. Lu Jian furrowed his eight-character eyebrows and said with a hint of guilt, yes, it's made for sale. Ao Do nodded. Oh. Are there women in Jinyang City who are over 1.7 meters tall? How dare they wear such clothes and not be beaten to death by their husbands when they go back? Even Gulen women dare not wear them like this. Having been seen through his thoughts, Lu Jian remained silent. I just said it's not hypocritical. Ao Do tapped his toes on the ground to make the shoes fit better. The two of them strolled along the riverbank, trying to choose places with fewer people. Those who saw Lu Jian and his companions dared not speak up because such a tire was definitely not easy to provoke for these ordinary people. Although they walked together, those who saw them didn't even pay attention to Lu Jian's appearance, and their eyes were all taken away by Ao Do. Zishir has passed, and a new year begins. The two of them have returned to the yard, and at this moment Ao Do is preparing to bid farewell. Thank you. Lu Jian said sincerely. You should thank me for coming all the way to celebrate the Chinese New Year for you, Ao Do joked. Lu Jian smiled. 
Just a smile is enough. Thank you so much. It's too insincere, isn't it? Ao Do complained. How do you want me to thank you? Lu Jian asked. Make more clothes for me, especially the ones I'm wearing underneath. I'll come and pick them up next time, Ao Do said. Lu Jian nodded, went inside and wrapped all the clothes, then took out a box containing jade hairpins. The hairpin is green all over, resembling the body of Ao Do. The reason why it is carved like this is because Lu Jian has never seen a snake that is more beautiful than Ao Do's body. Ao Do did not politely take it from Lu Jian, but happily accepted it with a sincere smile on his face. So I'm leaving. When will you come next time? Lu Jian asked tentatively. Ao Do restrained his smile and stood there silent. How many months? Lu Jian asked. Ao Do shook his head. Lu Jian frowned. New Year's Eve. Ao Do still shook his head. Lu Jian was a bit at a loss. So. I have encountered some trouble and must close down, otherwise I will be remembered, Ao Do said calmly. I originally wanted to ask Ao Do what trouble she had encountered but he realized that he was an ordinary person and did not have the ability to help her. Lu Jian smiled, trying to look more natural. How long will it take? Ao Do remained silent for a while. It used to take a few years, but now. It may take ten years or more. Lu Jian stood still in place. Ten years, for a person approaching thirty, in this world, they have already entered old age, and most farmers only have a lifespan of fifty years. Lu Jian analyzed Ao Do's words, and what she said before should have been before the contract with the companion spirit. Ultimately, it was this companion spirit relationship that dragged her down. I'm leaving. Ao Do interrupted Lu Jian's contemplation. Lu Jian regained his senses and nodded. Watching Ao Do disappear for a long time, Lu Jian sat slumped on the stool next to the stone table. What am I looking forward to again? Looking up at the fireworks in Zhenyang City welcoming the joy of the new year, everything just now seemed to have not happened. This courtyard is still that lonely and wild ghost. Over the courtyard, Ao Do looked at the lost Lu Rui. She could feel that Lu Ji had developed a spiritual dependence on herself but she didn't want to face it because she felt that Lu Ji couldn't accompany her to the end. Close your eyes and then open them. With a firm expression in his eyes, he flew straight towards Bai Yun Creek. The main hall of the seventh peak of Bai Yun Creek. Doer, have you considered finding a teacher this time? On the lounge chair in the palace, a friendly middle-aged man smiled and said to the woman kneeling on one knee below, with suppressed desire in his eyes. Master, the disciple is here to report to Master. The disciple is preparing to close down and break through the middle stage of building the foundation, Ao Do said respectfully. She was very dissatisfied with the kneeling ceremony, but this guy didn't know what kind of habit he had and demanded that his disciples must perform the kneeling ceremony. The armrest of the man's seat was crushed with a click. If you don't practice your top-level double cultivation method as a teacher and run to break through on your own, then why do I keep you? The man was furious. Ao Do didn't feel nervous at all. He slowly lifted his head, his pupils slightly opened, and his smile became more charming. Coupled with the clothes made by Lu Jian, it was irresistible. The man sitting on the lounge chair, the desire in his eyes is not suppressed. Master, my disciple's beautiful body is not yet fully developed. Double cultivation is not the best time now. When I break through to the middle stage of foundation construction and my beautiful body is fully developed, wouldn't it be better to talk about double cultivation? Ao Do said softly. The man had not made any statement yet, and the two women dressed in revealing clothes hidden behind the screen swallowed saliva. These two are considered Ao Do's senior sisters, and one of them has a cultivation level of golden elixir. The man breathed a sigh and tried his best to suppress his desires. Okay, I'll wait for you to break through as a teacher. Speaking, 
he threw a storage bag over. There are two top dot quality wood spirit stones inside, and 100 top dot quality wood spirit stones, both of which are of superior quality. Thank you very much, master. Ao Do took it and said goodbye with a bow. The two women behind the screen can no longer sit still. With so many spirit stones, they are almost half of their master's wealth. Ao Do had already left, and the two women immediately warmly welcomed him thinking that their master could also share some benefits with them. Strange to say, since Ao Do's arrival, although his master still often summoned them and several teachers and sisters, it was obvious that they had no feelings and were all lusts. But the sisters didn't hate Ao Do at all, even though she got more benefits than the sisters combined. Even if there is no hatred, it's okay. The most difficult thing to understand is that I really want to get close to her. Chapter 9. Mediation. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Lu Jian's days have returned to normal. After the Yuan Shao, filled round balls made of glutinous rice. Flour for Lantern Festival, we set up a laboratory in the yard, and then spent most of our savings to buy raw materials. Due to the fact that various countries need to mine spiritual stones and rare minerals for their sex, it is not difficult to find the minerals Lu Jian needs. Knowing the corresponding names and giving some money to market management can be entrusted to someone to find them for you. It's really not possible, and you can even draw a picture. Many times, the other person will know what it is just by looking at the picture, but the name is different. Although this is an outer city, due to its proximity to the peach blossom forest, the roads are very accessible. Every year during the peach blossom season, most young people in the city come here, making it the best time to open the door and do business. The most important thing for Lu Chen now is to change the style of clothes. He has to gather the essence of the two worlds, so that people in this world can like it and dare to wear it. A month later, the peach grove in the south of the city was already bustling with flowers and bones, and within a few days, it would be overcrowded. Recently, there have been officials and soldiers maintaining order arriving one after another. The gate of Lu Jian's yard was wide open, and inside were ten wooden dummies carved lifelike, with wigs draped over their heads and coiled into various shapes. The clothes they wore were even more magnificent. Some windbreakers are converted into cloaks, with a metal peacock inlaid screen on the back, two rows of metal buttons with peach blossom patterns on the front, and a belt made of exotic craftsmanship. The collar is removed and replaced with a scarf. Finally, a pair of jeans and long boots are added. What else are their hoodies with bronze patterns and mountain and watered down jackets? They have everything, and he perfectly combines the craftsmanship of the two worlds. Anyone passing by Lu Jian's doorstep would frown and look around. But when asked about the price, there is an impulse to curse. Due to strict process requirements and the fact that only Lu Jian is present, mass production cannot be achieved. The cheapest set of clothes, Lu Jian, also sold for 100 tails. The more complex ones even sold for 300 tails. It looks very expensive, but aside from the cost, it's only two dot thirds. Anyway, Lu Jian doesn't think he's making much profit. Although the guests were all scared away, Lu Jian didn't panic because his positioning was not these people from the beginning, but the children of those nobles and nobles who had the purchasing power. And Lu Jian deliberately made all the women's clothing to avoid smashing her hands. Men may still have resistance to clothing, but women are hard to say. On this day, Lu Jian was sitting at a stone table, tapping on the mold for making zippers with a small iron hammer. Making zippers by hand was too time-consuming, so in order to save time, he planned to make a mold. At this moment, a woman in her forties walked outside the door. The woman had a round appearance, holding a cattail fan on such a cold day, and her face was covered in rouge. When she came in, she first looked at the clothes on the puppet and seemed very satisfied. Then he looked at Lu Jian again and saw him dressed in linen clothes. He frowned and suspected that he was the owner of the house here. Miss, are you looking at clothes? Lu Jian asked tentatively. Ah. 
that. Your clothes look quite interesting, how do you sell them, the chubby woman asked. Lu Jian pointed to a loose set of clothing next to her based on her body shape and said, you're more suitable for this set, this set is 120 tails. Actually, there isn't a set of clothes here that suits her. Lu Jian also didn't want to sell it to her. In his opinion, looking like Wu Huan was just a waste of clothes. Upon hearing this, the chubby woman swallowed her saliva and touched her clothes with her hand. She felt that the material was extraordinary, over a hundred tails, maybe it was really worth it. I smiled awkwardly. What's that? I'm a famous matchmaker in Nanching, just call me Aunt Wan. Lu Jian frowned. She was almost thirty years old, and this chubby woman was only seven or eight years older than herself. She even called herself Aunt. I'll call you Sister Wang. The matchmaker chuckled as soon as he heard it. The young man's mouth is so sweet. Then he asked tentatively, how many months have you been buying this house? It's been almost half a year. Lu Jian said. After receiving a positive response from Lu Jian, the matchmaker smiled even happier. Do you have a woman you are interested in? If so, tell me and I will arrange a matchmaker for you. Lu Jian shook his head. Hi. It's okay, sister will arrange it for you. If it's done, don't forget sister's kindness, the matchmaker smiled while covering her mouth with a fan. Lu Jian smiled. Could you please trouble sister Wang? The matchmaker quickly waved his hand, neither troublesome nor troublesome. She knew about this location, although it was relatively remote, the courtyard was more expensive than all the courtyards in the outer city, and could be compared to some cheaper inner city houses. Moreover, Lu Jian was also a tailor with quite impressive skills, so he would definitely not treat himself unfairly. Little brother's birth date and eight characters asked Sister Wang. In the twenty-third year of Emperor Wu of the Great Han Dynasty, on the eighth day of the fifth month, a person was born with the surname Lu and the name Ji. Lu said. The matchmaker was taken aback. Former dynasty people. Then he counted the years and said in surprise, are you almost thirty? Lu Jian smiled. Two more years left. Lu Jian was white and handsome, and his age was unknown. At first, the matchmaker thought he was only in his early twenties. I thought Lu Jian had a sweet mouth, but I didn't expect that he was overthinking it. Suddenly, I thought of Lu Jian's age again, and then thought of my own age. So what, sister is 30.6 this year. Lu Jian sat back at the stone table, continuing to knock on the mold without going to pick up the matchmaker. The matchmaker awkwardly smiled. Ha, huh, I'm leaving first, waiting for your message. The matchmaker who had just walked to the door suddenly turned her head. By the way, what's your name? Lu Jian. Lu Jian said. The matchmaker frowned. That wreckage. The remains of bones. The matchmaker remained silent, nodded, frowned, and left. Lu Jian looked at the departing matchmaker and shook his head. He is not in a hurry to get married, because he feels that few people can step into him. After so many years, there is only one. But it doesn't matter if you give it a try, maybe you can really make yourself less lonely. The matchmaker was very efficient and received one in the afternoon that day. Hey, younger brother, take a look. This is fate. I mentioned finding a marriage for you earlier, but when I turned around, I met the Zhou family who are behind me. Let me say hello to you first. The matchmaker shook the fan and pretended to be very hardworking. Wang Jie, please take a seat quickly. Lu Jian welcomed him up. Hi, you lucky kid. The girl from the Zhou family, as our neighbors all know, is born like a water spirit. I don't know how many young men in the capital regard her as their dream lover. The matchmaker boasted. Lu Jian knows the style of matchmakers, and most of them exaggerate. Real people are probably not half as good as he praises. That's really hard work, Sister Wang. Hey. 
As long as you can make it, it's not hard. The matchmaker waved her hand. Not long after, a carriage stopped at the gate of Lu Jian. First, a maid got off the carriage, lifted the curtain, and then a woman in green clothes poked her head out of the carriage. I originally thought this woman was pretty, but when she put on the green clothes, she immediately became tasteless because even the most beautiful green clothes were not as attractive as Ao Do's. After the girl came down, Yu Guang saw the clothes displayed in Lu Jian's courtyard and was momentarily blinded. Oh my! Damn girl, what are you looking at? Do you want to fall and kill me? A sharp voice came, and the matchmaker, who was originally smiling like flowers, was clearly taken aback and thought to himself, Auntie, what kind of temper are you having at this time? Thinking this way, I turned my head to look at Lu Jian's face. Sure enough, as she thought, Lu Jian's smile was much more fake. The matchmaker knows best how to observe words and expressions. Hurriedly welcomed him out. Miss Zhou, didn't you fall? Miss Zhou is still reprimanding the maid. Humph, I'll deal with you when I go back. The maid remained silent like a cicada, never daring to look up again. Chapter 10 First Guest You are listening at NovelFull.audio Entering the courtyard, Miss Zhou did not look at Lu Jian, but at the set of clothes on the dummy. Lu Jian maintained a smile on his face and poured a glass for everyone, including the maid. Let me tell you, don't you think this girl has a bad temper, but her fate is particularly tough and she really matches you. The matchmaker whispered to Lu Jian. Lu Jian responded with a smile. Xiao Zhou, come and sit down. The matchmaker waved. A woman surnamed Zhou came over and sat down, looking at Lu Jian with dissatisfaction. If it weren't for Lu Jian's decent appearance, she might have lost her temper. Lu Jian nodded with a smile. My name is Lu Jian. I know, my name is Zhou Qi. Zhou Qi's voice was a bit high. I just checked and there's another iron furnace room over there. Are you a blacksmith? Zhou Qi pointed in the direction of the iron furnace room and asked. Lu Jian nodded. I usually make some iron products. Zhou Qi didn't speak to Lu Jian anymore, but looked at the matchmaker. Aunt Wang, although my family may not be considered a gentry or merchant, it is still considered a scholarly family. I will let the tailor go, and you, the blacksmith, will come to my house to collect it. Zhou Qi looked at the extra cup of tea on the table while speaking, sneered and turned to look at her maid. Thinking to myself. Even the maid needs to pour a cup of tea, she is indeed a lowly embryo. Um. The matchmaker didn't expect this little girl to get so angry. She looked apologetically at Lu Jian and led Zhou Qi aside. Sit down and have a cup of tea, Lu Jian said kindly as he looked at the maid standing in confusion the maid waved her hand repeatedly upon hearing the words. No, 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 no I just need to stand. Lu Jian stopped talking and looked at the two people standing not far away. The voices of the two talking were not low, and Lu Jian didn't know the meaning of the matchmaker leading them over. He heard them all. Auntie, your dad asked me to tell you about some wealthy businessmen and politicians, but why don't you despise them for their age? Or do others look down on you? You're already 20.4 years old, and if you don't get married, you'll become an old lady, the matchmaker said bitterly. Don't be fooled by this guy's poor attire. Being able to buy this courtyard proves his strength, and you've also seen his craftsmanship. It's really good. Apart from anything else, in the future, when it comes to dressing, in your circle, you won't be able to. Ah. The matchmaker finally patted Zhou Qi lightly with her hand. But. Zhou Qi wanted to say something more. Don't be fooled, you see how honest he is. In the future, you won't be the master of the family. It's better than marrying those wealthy officials as concubines, right? He's bullied every day, the matchmaker advised again. Seeing Zhou Qi still hesitating, the matchmaker added more fire. Auntie, let's not talk about anything else for now. 
Isn't this more handsome than what I told you before? Look at that figure, it's not thanks to you. Zhou Qi looked at Lu Jian. Not to mention, the more you look at it, the more pleasing it becomes. Turning his head, he nodded at the matchmaker. That's right. The matchmaker happily patted Zhou Qi again with her hand. Lu Jian's smiling face remained, but at the same time he frowned, looking very embarrassed. The matchmaker saw the embarrassment on Lu Jian's face and thought he was worried that the marriage wouldn't be successful. She ran over and bumped Lu Jian with her shoulder. Hey! It's done now. Sister, why don't we forget it? We'll fight in the future, and I'm not a big deal. I'll cripple her later. Lu Jian deliberately lowered his voice, but it could reach Zhou Qi very well. Zhou Qi was about to get angry on the spot, but the matchmaker was faster than her. What nonsense are you talking about? You're a blacksmith, a small tailor, and you don't have any business. Why did you pick on me? Lu Jian looked at Zhou Qi and chuckled. I don't want it. Stinky tailor, wait for me. Zhou Qi walked out of the yard, lifting her skirt. The maid quickly followed. You. The matchmaker was momentarily speechless, and the matchmaker money on both sides was about to be obtained. Unexpectedly, Lu Jian came out of nowhere. Sorry, Miss Wang, you have tea, Lu Ji picked up the tea. Humph. The matchmaker shook her sleeve and left in anger. Lu Jian looked in the direction of the door and drank the tea in his hand. The matchmaker was really angry. As soon as she left Lu Jian's yard, she spread rumors about him everywhere, saying that he was a stinky tailor who didn't do anything all day and specialized in researching women's clothing. She had a big temper and said that his ex-wife was killed by him. The news quickly reached Lu Jian's ears. He knew that it was impossible for him to mention his wife here. Two days later another person came to Lu Jian's yard. Of course. This person came straight for his clothes. The person looked sixteen or seventeen years old, followed by a maid and two guards. Judging from their attire, they were either wealthy or noble. She looked at the style and workmanship of the clothes, and the materials used, and the more she looked, the more surprised she became. Lu Jian knew that he had finally met someone who knew the industry. Hiss. Little tailor, did you make this dress? The little girl asked. Lu Jian gave a scholarly salute. It's me. Good craftsmanship, the little girl said sincerely. It's very novel and beautiful, but your material is very strange. Lu Jian smiled. I made this material myself, and it's normal for Miss not to have seen it before. Ah! The little girl was shocked. This material doesn't feel worse than what I'm wearing, and it's more reasonable in many places. I didn't expect you to make it yourself. I'm flattered. Lu Jian said. Interesting little tailor, the little girl said. I touched the hairstyles of the dummy and imagined them for a moment. I found that these hairstyles were very simple, but they looked very natural. The smile on his face grew stronger and stronger, and he waved his big hand. Okay, I'll take everything. Lu Jian was taken aback for a moment. Miss, don't you ask about the price. Oh. How do you sell it, the little girl asked casually. It can be seen that she doesn't care about the price, just continues with Lu Jian's words. These two sets are 100 tails each, Lu Jian pointed to two of the clothes and said. The little girl was clearly stunned for a moment, wondering what clothes sell for 100 tails. These two sets are 120 tails per set, 170 tails per set, 220 tails per set, and 300 tails per set. After finishing speaking, Lu Jian added, running a small business without bargaining. The little girl swallowed her saliva. You. Won't frame me, will you? Lu Jian shook his head. Miss, you can buy one of each type, although the color is different, the style is not different, so there is no need to buy two sets. But I don't want others to wear the same clothes as me, the little girl stubbornly said. 
Lu Jian shook his head. That won't work, I will still produce it, after all, there aren't so many styles for me to make. The little girl felt a bit aggrieved and said with difficulty, Okay, can you make it cheaper? No yes. Lu Jian said with uncertainty. The little girl looked at Lu Jian with a hesitant expression. Lu Jian finally made concessions. Okay, I'll give you a white crane hairpin. When the little girl heard the word okay, she was quite happy, but when she heard it was a hairpin, her face instantly collapsed. Can you give me a set of clothes? The little girl asked tentatively. No, just the hairpin. Don't forget it. Lu Jian was very determined. The little girl pouted and started learning how to speak with Lu Jian. After finishing, she said discontentedly, the hairpin is the hairpin. I'll take it. Give me the money. I turned to the maid and said. The maid heard this and rummaged through the brocade bag she carried with her. Lu Jian's current situation, when he returned to the house and took out a wooden box, the little girl was startled on the spot when she opened it. A pure white jade hairpin, carved in the shape of a diving red-crowned crane, with the white crane's head precisely adorned with red jade, and its claws gripping two red threads woven from its head. The woven part was just caught by the claws, and two silver bells were tied to the tail of the two red ropes. Wow! How beautiful! The little girl held a hairpin. Definitely, I'll sell it alone for thirty tails. Lu Jian was a bit reluctant. The little girl quickly retreated upon hearing this. Thank you, little tailor. Lu Jian spread his hand. Give me the money. Didn't you say to give me a ride? The little girl moved the hairpin behind her. Money for clothes. Lu Jian said. I don't want any clothes anymore, the little girl chuckled. Lu Jian was stunned. No you. Then return the hairpin to me. Didn't you give me the hairpin? The little girl blinked innocently. Lu Jian withdrew his hand and looked at the two guards behind the little girl, wondering if he could have fought. Ha ha. What do you want? Let's play with you. The little girl laughed heartily and said to the maid behind her, Give me the money. Yes. The maid behind her handed over the prepared silver ticket, there are a thousand tails. Change. Lu Jian returned to search for ninety tails. I'll borrow your room, the little girl said as she ran to Lu Jian's bedroom with a set of clothes. No way. Hey. Lu Jian wanted to stop, but in response, he heard the sound of the door closing. In Lu Jian's room, the little girl who had changed her clothes looked up at Lu Jian's bedroom. The impression given to him was simple and tidy, with a faint fragrance. I looked at the long table next to his window, where various wooden and jade stones were piled up, and there were neatly arranged tools. On the other side was a completed wooden and stone carving. She was amazed by the variety of carved objects. In no time, he discovered something emitting a fragrance. That is a glass bottle filled with a light red liquid, tightly sealed, but when approached, it has a strong floral aroma, giving people a refreshing feeling. It smells countless times better than the sachet I carry with me. The little girl stepped on her feet and opened a crack in the window. She looked at the loose skeleton and then picked up the glass bottle to play with. There was a very large glass bead on the bottle, and the little girl pulled it hard, but it was actually pulled out by her. The fragrant aroma instantly covered her whole life, causing her to lose focus for a moment. Shaking his small head, he quickly closed the bottle cap and then put the glass bottle directly into his pocket. As she walked out, she stood at the door as if nothing had happened, admiring them. Although the little girl was only sixteen or seventeen years old, she was already open and beautiful. At this moment, she was wearing a blue hooded hoodie, paired with white leggings, and a pair of hiking shoes, making her look much taller. Lu Jian ordered something. Hee <laughs> hee. Let's go. The little girl walked quickly out of the yard without dragging any mud or water. Lu Jian smiled as he bid farewell. Hurry up. Hurry up. 
Hurry up. As she left the courtyard, the little girl jumped onto the carriage and kept following the people under her. Lu Jian looked at the silver note in his hand, feeling very pleased and suddenly sniffled. Hey! Stop me! I quickly chased after him. Five minutes later. The little girl poked her head out on the carriage. Don't chase after me anymore. You can't run away like a horse. It's just a broken bottle of water. What's wrong with giving me clothes that are so expensive? You give it back to me. Lu Jian shouted as he looked at the carriage being pulled apart. No. Thieves. You go back quickly, we'll have our house stolen next time. Upon hearing these words, Lu Jian stopped in his tracks. He is really worried that his home will be stolen.